friends, welcome back to Hot News. It's a Wednesday and we got some spicy, spicy AMD news for you. So just hold your horses for a second because we got to get to the existential question of the day. Speaking of horses, mammals need to know, are coconuts mammals? Because they have hair and they produce milk. So mammal, right? It right? Makes sense. Facts, truth, words coming out. Anyways, let's go ahead and Stop that and answer your the existential question down below, but let's talk about the today's video sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Synergy, my friends. In case you're working from home and you have multiple computers like your normal desktop, and now you have your work laptop, but you don't wanna have to deal with touching the touchpad and the keyboard on the multiple computers, Synergy is here to help you out. You can use one computer to control both devices by using their program. It works on Mac, it works on Linux, it works on Windows. It's very simple to set up. You can go to the link in the video description, buy the program for $29 or $39 in case you need SSL encryption for their pro version and you can get started with the Synergy app to make it so that you can use both keyboards and mouse from one section you don't have to set up a KVM switch you don't have to clutter your desk any more than it may be right now in this crazy time you don't need more hassle in your life Synergy is here to make it simple so check them out at the link in the video description let's jump into the AMD news it's big it's spicy some would say that it's big Navi hmm Yes, because a very well-known leaker has come out with some good data on the die size of Big Navi. And I gotta tell you, it's a big boy. It's a chunk of donk. Twice the size of a 5700 XT. He thick! So a 5700 XT is on the seven nanometer process, which means it's tiny already. Now double that on an even further seven nanometer process. They're supposed to be using seven nanometer EUV for this. And that should mean that we're probably gonna be in the region of two to two and a half to three to 10, maybe a hundred times as much performance as the 5700 XT. Obviously I'm kidding, but the die size is twice. So you'd think two times the performance. AMD's slides have confirmed that they're going for 50% performance per watt increase. So hopefully that also translates into a power increase. But if we look at the leak, it's not just big Navi at 505 millimeter square on the die. There's also the medium Navi, which is 340. And then there's smaller Navi, which is the Navi Navi 23 coming in at 240 millimeter squared, which if I can just reference for a second, the Xbox Series X, which is the 12 teraflop RDNA 2 APU that we're expecting to come out from Microsoft that they've already announced and showcased, the total die size of the APU, including the processor side, is 360 square millimeters. So, big Navi, it's flipping massive. Medium Navi, Navi 22, is 340 square millimeters, 20 less than the APU on the freaking Xbox Series X. So if these leaks are correct, we are getting some mammoth GPUs out of AMD and could maybe Hopefully, I know I say this a lot and I always regret it later, maybe compete with Nvidia on the high end. AMD did mention in previous discussions that they're aiming to disrupt 4K gaming, which the only way they're gonna do that is by providing Nvidia level performance at a price that is less than Nvidia. I don't know if they think they can do that. Who, who knows what's going on there? But also there's more information coming out about the smaller versions of Navi. Big Navi is supposed to be the wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, 4K giant. But then there's the lower end versions of our DNA too which are anticipated to not have ray tracing. It's expected that AMD in their first generation of having ray tracing cards is going to pull in NVIDIA where the RTX 2016 up featured ray tracing technology and the GTX 1660 Ti and down featured the same architecture but didn't have any of those extra ray tracing features. So we're expecting that to happen with Navi on the lower end in RDNA 2. So that's the general consensus coming out from uh, various leaks that are happening. And according to this Adored TV blog post on the matter, they said that the lower end Navi 23 is being referred to internally by AMD as an Nvidia killer. So it would have to compete with them on value and absolutely destroy it. If you can give me 1440p gaming with Navi 23 for $150, I'll be down. Whether or not that's gonna happen remains to be seen. But it does seem like AMD is on the right train. We have new rumors coming out about Big Navi. It is exciting. Our DNA 2 obviously on pace to come out 
hopefully before the consoles launch. But big Navi, 505 square millimeters. That is a, that is a chunker. <laughs> but that's not the only big thing that AMD has going on right now. Yesterday, their Q1 earnings report came out and they have big money. Holy crap, they're up 41% in year over year revenue, but that's not it. They're also up 58% in gross profit. They were up 111% in operating income and up 161% in net income. They are balling in tons of cash and they increased their R&D spending by 18%. Not only is AMD bringing in more cash than ever before, they're exporting more cash into research and development to keep their growth on target, but also with the earnings report that came out yesterday, AMD did yet again confirm our DNA 2 and Zen 3 will happen by the end of the year. There's a tweet from AMD directly saying that this is coming out this year. Just hold your horses on that. But while we're talking about Zen 3, let's rewind the clock to Zen 2. Some Threadripper news is coming out. There are Threadripper chips that are out there. It goes the 3970X and then there's the 3990X, but there's a $2,000 gap right in the middle and there's a 32 core difference between those two chips. However, there is now a CPU Z screenshot of a 3980X 48 core chip, which would fill that middle gap quite nicely, likely to come in at the $3,000 mark because the 3970X is two grand, 3990 DX is thirty nine ninety dollars or four grand. So having it come in at three grand would be a good place for forty eight cores, and it would be a pretty decent value at that. Whether or not this is real, whether or not that screenshot is fake, who knows? How many people are vying for a forty eight core? I'm not quite sure. Does AMD need to make it? I don't know if they can. I mean, if it all it costs them is bending a 64 core down to 48 and they could sell it for higher money than they could a 3970X, why not do it? And why not wait for console news? Well, because apparently we're getting it later than it originally anticipated. And a lot of the rumors were saying that the PlayStation 5 announcement events and all of the good details that we're waiting for was supposed to happen in May. However, there's a new reset era forum leak rumor going around that the first PlayStation 5 full reveal with first party games being announced for launch titles is gonna happen on June. June 4th. Whether or not that's true remains to be seen. Whether or not we're going to get more information in May, we'll have to hold off to see if that's true. But we got some more information about Stadia yesterday, and that is they're adding 11 new games, including EA titles such as Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. You got Madden, you got FIFA. They also have a bunch of other ones. Big note, if you have Stadia Pro, you get PUBG for free. Reese, how is playing PUBG on Stadia? Awful. Awful. Stadia, stop. Okay, you didn't need to give us a video announcement for this. You should have just put it in a blog post because that's how unimportant that update is. Pathetic. Maybe it's to make EA happy. Who knows? Stadia, stop trying to happen. Just happen, okay? Don't, stop making spectacles. Why are you like this? Well, there was a big spectacle about Valorant with Riot's new anti-cheat software that came out with it. It requires root level access, giving it permission for a lot of stuff that people aren't very comfortable with and a lot more than typical anti-cheats. However, they have caved halfway. One of the big things was that you couldn't ever turn it off if you have it installed, but now you can disable it if you're not playing the game, but you have to re-enable it if you want to play the game. Stupid. They should just make it like every other anti-cheat software. There's gonna be cheaters. There's already freaking cheaters with Vanguard. So it's not like it's some revolutionary thing. Riot, please. Also, they announced that they're gonna be working on a rank mode coming out soon. Take that for what it's worth. And you can take Samsung for what it's worth, which is billions and billions of dollars because they also had their Q1 earnings report and they're doing okay. And they also talked about how their five nanometer and three nanometer nodes are on track. They talked about how they're gonna have five nanometers going on before the end of Q2 of this year, which could coincide with some rumors that we talked about previously about NVIDIA having a secret five nanometer project, but that was on TSMC. So who knows what's going on there, but Samsung moving forward as always, and your wallet is moving backwards if you pick up this keyboard, the Razer Huntsman Elite. But according to Razer, a lot of you did because it is the number one best selling keyboard in the United States, according to total sales money. So like the, the total aggregate cash that Razer received, not the total amount of units, but considering it's 160 to a $200 keyboard. What? I get it has optical switches. I get it has chroma lighting, but what? I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't see the appeal of the Huntsman Elite. Not that bad. Like I get that it would sell, but number one, dang, you some thirsty Razer boys. And I'm thirsty for this icy dock. Hmm, some ice to cool my 
delicious tongue. Anyways, the IC dock is gonna introduce hot swappable NVMe drives, which is kind of cool. It's a thing. You can hot swap NVMe drives now with this little adapter that comes out. And you could potentially get $3. Reese, you want $3? Yes. Okay, you can get $3 if you were happy to be part of this class action lawsuit against Apple for disabling FaceTime on the iPhone 4 and 4S with iOS 6. So this happened a long time ago because we're on what, iOS 13 at this point? Okay, it was a $18 million settlement against Apple for disabling FaceTime on those two phones, but the claimants will only get $3 each and the rest of the money's going to lawyers. Nobody cares. Class action lawsuits are never for the people, okay? They're to piss off the company and make lawyers rich. That's what class action lawsuits do. I mean, you could get $3 that you didn't have before, which I mean, in this economy could be very good. But also I read a Reddit unethical life pro tip that apparently they don't always fact check like class action lawsuits. And so you can apply for a ton of them and just get like $20 checks randomly here and there. They said it's about like a 50 50 shot. I'm not advocating it. I was just like, huh. I guess that's true. And I guess it's true that Google kills off things that don't matter. Just probably what's gonna happen to Stadia in about a year, maybe two, I, I could give it two years. Well, they are now killing off Shoelace. Shoelace was an experimental social network launched exclusively in New York City. It launched in mid 2019, they're shutting it down May 12th. The service was geared towards people looking for group activities with other locals who share the same interests. So like Meetup or something like that. But they called it Shoelace. The heck, what are you doing? Why are you like this? Speaking of New York City, taxis. Ford is delaying their self-driving taxi fleet because of Voldemort until 2022. And movies have been delayed, some of them. Other movies have released in home theaters or rather at, at your local uh, TV. Uh, of course, I'm talking about Trolls World Tour. They had 5 million paid downloads in the US and Canada, which equates to $100 million. In the first three weeks that this movie was out, $100 million, which is more than the first Trolls film's entire theatrical gross in those countries. This led to Universal coming out and saying, hey, we might do this more often, which led to AMC, the movie theater chain, being like, the hell you are, excuse me. The quote from the National Association of Theater Owners was, this performance is indicative of hundreds of millions of people isolated in their homes seeking entertainment, not a shift in consumer movie viewing preferences. I call bull crap. That is bull crap. I call bull crap, everybody wants to to stay at home and watch these things. Do you think when the economy opens up that people actively want to go out to movie theaters as much as they did before? For certain movies, sure. For kids movies like Trolls World Tour, I'd rather sit at home and let my kids watch that while I can go do something else instead of having to watch them in a theater. That makes so much more sense to me. Avengers Endgame, yes, cinema. A Quiet Place 2, home. I want to be home watching that one. Anyways, I think that they're just scared that they're going to lose a lot of business because they've already lost a ton of business. They're probably going to lose more if companies actually permanently shift to also releasing home releases, which I would love. Do this. Do this every major motion picture company. I will buy your movies more. I'm not going to rent Trolls because I don't care. I'm not going to have my kids watch Trolls with you troll. But freaking, freaking, I don't know of any good movies coming out. Anyways, I can think of good conspiracy theories uh, we're not going to talk about Tom DeLong being right about UFOs, but I knew he was all along. I, I've, I, I've read his books, okay? That's how deep I am into the Tom DeLong alien conspiracy thing. I read his alien books. Also, aliens exist. I'm not like you guys. 12 majestic lies, referring to the majestic 12. Anyways, not conspiracy time that side, conspiracy time for SpaceX and their Starlink satellite because Elon Musk has come out and talked about how they're gonna be working on reducing Starlink satellite visibility from the ground by installing sunshade blocks as well as darker painting on everything to make it so that they can't see the satellites, which leads me to believe what companies or countries are launching satellites that have these anti-visibility technology, probably a lot of them. How many of them are spying on me right now? And I'm gonna spy an existential question coming in from a distance, hello there. Are coconuts mammals? They got hair, they have milk. What do you do with that? I don't know. Answer down below in the comments. Don't forget to check out Synergy, the app that you need to declutter your life for mouse and keyboard. Make sure that you can control multiple things at once with one set. You don't need more than that, okay? Reduce your life. Life's crazy out there. Hectic stuff's going down. Don't make your mouse and keyboard thing working that way. And in case you're wondering about these, they're finger-like gloves. You'll find out in a video sometime soon. And that's it, we're done with hot news. I'm, yeah, big Navi, good stuff. I'm gonna, big boy, out of here. I'm not lazy, I'm just baby, tiny baby boy.
I, what? Heck? Who? What? 